welcome to Art This Week. I'm Hollis Hammonds, and I'm at the Manil Drawing Institute, where I'll be speaking with assistant curator Kelly Montana about the exhibit Sai Luen, The Parade. Thank you so much, Kelly, for joining us today. Thank you, Hollis. For me, the, this exhibit is very moving. And um, using this theme of the parade, Sai Luen takes us on this tumultuous journey of uh, joy, really, and destruction. There's light and dark and light. I wondered if you could give us a description, I guess, of that journey that uh, Sai is taking us through. Of course. So the story Sai Luen is telling is using no words at all and 63 drawings that go in a particular order and sequence. And that story begins with children, families, parents, pets, this energy of going to a community gathering, of going to a parade, and you feel that excitement, you see in the story the trumpets blaring, the flags waving, and then it very quickly becomes obvious that this parade is actually a scene that's intended to display power, it's intended to intimidate, and it's intended to display nationalism and as a tool of recruitment, so kind of military power. So quickly the story turns where you see these young boys that were so enthusiastic about this parade continue their enthusiasm and turn that enthusiasm into playing with weapons, mm -hmm. playing with power over each other. And then you see young boys become young men. And then you see their mothers send them off into war. And then the story turns into looking at what war does to, to the communities that held these families, into the communities writ large, what it does to ecology, what it does to environment, how it completely tears communities apart. And the story, the last third, is really looking quite carefully at, at events specific to World War II, which is the incarceration of people in concentration camps, which is looking at violence, genocide, and then the story actually ends right where it begins, which is with a parade, this time an armistice parade, celebrating victory. But very crucially, very critically, the drawings that end the story are compositionally just as those drawings that began the story. So what it does, it forms this kind of cycle where the drawings kind of, the beginning and the end, overlap with each other. This very critical take that war happens in cycles, war happens across geography, war happens across time. So these events that are specific to the era that he's speaking to are actually become kind of a broader story about communities that have been through this cycle and been through this struggle. Could you tell us a little bit more about Sai and his personal story and how that influenced the creation of this work? Absolutely. So Sylun was born in Poland to a Jewish family and fled Poland when he was really quite young. Um, his family was fleeing pogroms, anti-Semitic violence, and they went to Germany where that sense of safety lasted not very long at all. And so he and his brother became refugees to the United States when they were teenagers, um, young men. And soon after, Lewin elected to enlist in the United States Army, even though he was a lifelong pacifist, he felt called to that service to go back and fight the very same powers that had caused him and his family to flee. So he enlisted as part of a special military unit called the Ritchie Boys, which was specifically made to gather men with language skills, specifically mm -hmm. German language skills, which he had. So actually a number of Jewish refugees ended up serving in this special military unit. They were translators, they were interrogators, and what he witnessed during his time there was deeply traumatic and really informed the remainder of his art practice. He was always an artist, but when he returned to the United States, he again returned to his practice, initially with paintings that were light-filled, expressionistic, almost impressionistic, you could say. But he turned his artwork to the observations that he had made during wartime, 
And the parade was one of the first works to, to come out of that, to come out of those kind of 10 years of processing what he had been through. And that observation that the world didn't seem to be any more peaceful despite what the entire globe had been through. And he remained an artist for decades. He taught, he made work, he never stopped making work. He actually made two wordless novels in his lifetime. Parade is the first, The Journey is the second, and spent his kind of last years in, in rural Pennsylvania. The Parade was published in book form in 1957, and more recently it was republished as an accordion fold book with the help of Art Spiegelman. But being in the gallery makes me really think about how the, this form of seeing the work is different and can't really be captured in a book form. And I was just curious what you were thinking um, like during the curatorial process about that. Absolutely. It was really an interesting and heady challenge to think about how to spatialize a book and how to make an experience that doesn't try to replicate what books do so well. What can an architecture, what can a space do, and how can it serve this story differently than the experience than someone can have with the accordion Ford fold book, for example. The 1957 copies are a little harder to get a hold of, <laughs> but the 2016 copies are readily available. So I thought everyone can have that experience. The book's right outside the gallery. So in here, what I was really thinking about was one, how do you build that sense of scale and size, that sense of intimidation that's happening through rhythms and repetitions in the book? There's also a few areas where, of course, the story is always moving forward in time, but there's also a few areas where the story becomes slightly parallel to the main narrative where you see perhaps a glimpse of an animal on their lonesome, where you see rats tunneling in the earth, where you see men having moments of maybe confession with the loved animals or loved ones in their lives. So it felt like having a moment to sort of step slightly out of time and cherish those moments that seem just slightly parallel to the main narrative felt like an interesting, an interesting thing to do, but again, to also build those senses of scale so that anyone can have kind of an up close and personal view of, of these works. Yeah, and it really does matter to be able to get close and see the larger image and also see the mark making, mm -hmm. um, which is a thing that no matter how good the printing is, like it just doesn't seem to capture that quality. Absolutely. You were talking about um, like a rhythm, a, a repetition, um, a pattern um, that leads us through the work. I really felt as a viewer that there was this uh, definite beat of the drum or this marching of the feet, and it really propelled me as a viewer through the work. And I just wondered if you could talk about some of those formal qualities in Sai's work and how he's leveraging those to get this narrative across. Absolutely. Well, I began our conversation talking about the overall cycle of war that was so important to Lewin to communicate. But there's also these smaller internal cycles and in the sense of certain motifs come up again. For example, the dog, this kind of dog of war. Mothers appear a lot in terms of care or concern, um, but also figures of power in lives or figures of deep loss recur again and again. But there is also a momentum. You're right, there's a momentum to these drawings that propels, that creates this kind of solemn procession in the viewer. And you see that with, you know, there's hands pointing forward, there's figures running from left to right. So the narrative is really being told in a way that is propulsive. It pushes you to, to the next drawing. And at the same time, each one of these works, even though they're static, internally there's so much to pick apart in each of them. There's so many stories embedded in them and so many at times kind of maybe contradictory 
observations, mm -hmm. which creates this incredible sense of nuance about what he's really saying about war and genocide, the Holocaust, at the, at the family level to the society level. Well, thank you so much for you. sharing your time with us. Of course. Thanks for your kind questions. Find all of our videos and sign up for our newsletter at artthisweek.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter.